Today, it's plutonium 239's turn. This element, regardless of the isotope, is highly monitored due to atomic weapon laws. What we have here is an alpha calibration sample and that is exactly what it's used for in our lab. The plutonium was electrochemically deposited on a stainless steel coin. There are precisely 867 becquerel of plutonium on it. And now let's take a look at the alpha spectrum from it. As we can see, there are two peaks clearly visible. The low energy peak can be attributed to plutonium-239. The higher energy peak cannot be the daughter nucleus uranium-235 because the half-life is too long for it to have formed by now and the alpha energy also doesn't match. What is much more logical is that the peak is associated with plutonium-238 with an alpha energy of 5.5 mega electron volts. In such plutonium solutions, the element might not be isotopically pure. I believe I should tell you first where the plutonium comes from and how plutonium is produced. Let's see if there might be an experimental video about that in the far future, but for now, plutonium doesn't occur naturally. In light water reactors, 5% enriched uranium-235 is used. This is split by thermal neutrons and you got your energy, hooray. But what interests us in this case is the other 95% of uranium-238. The uranium-238 has quite a large neutron capture cross-section and thus can be converted into uranium-239. This quickly undergoes beta minus decay into neptunium-239, which then rapidly decays into plutonium-239. Aha, that's how we get plutonium-239. Regarding plutonium-238, in our thought process, we have to continue to irradiate the fuel with more neutrons. Eventually, significant amounts of plutonium-240 from the plutonium-239 can be formed. By the way, it cannot be excluded that there is plutonium-240 on the sample, but due to the same alpha energy to plutonium-239, we cannot distinguish them in the spectrum. The plutonium-240 further converts into plutonium-241, which undergoes beta minus decay and becomes americium-241. So now there are two ways to get to plutonium-238, either through decay of americium to neptunium, which then becomes neptunium-238 through irradiation with neutrons and then forms plutonium-238 through beta minus decay. Those who want pure plutonium-238 can chemically separate the neptunium before irradiation. Alternatively, the americium-241 continues to be irradiated into americium-242, which decays into curium-242. And then the decay product is plutonium-238. These are all processes that can occur in a fuel rod of a light water reactor and can form plutonium, for example, used in this calibration sample. Of course, only for calibration sample is plutonium being used. As a quick side note, this sample is considered an open sample, so you could get contaminated and before release a DEAN standard wipe test was performed by the German calibration service. In my head I imagined this DEAN normed test to go like this, someone takes out a tissue, wipes the plutonium sample once, looks at this unchanged tissue dead serious and the other guy looks at this whole process and writes something down. I found that thought to be very amusing. However, that is not how a DEAN standard wipe test is done, all right? A special thanks goes to the working group of analytics and fundamental nuclear chemistry from Dr. Erik Strupp and the division of nuclear chemistry at the University of Cologne and to my Patreons. With that being said, goodbye.